Okay, everybody, we are here with a 10 minute math review for transformations. And uh, the first thing I wanted to start with is the general formula. So I got all the letters marked up here. Um, so let's start with uh, the blue one. So uh, the A and the K are gonna affect the Y value. So what I've done is I've taken an XY point and I'm showing you uh, what each transformation does. So if there's a number in front of here, it's gonna multiply your Y values. And if you have a number out here, you're just gonna simply add it to your Y values. Now for the X values, uh, we got B and H. So first of all, you need to make sure that you pull B out, the coefficient on the X term has to be positive one. So you pull out the B and you're going to multiply X by the reciprocal of whatever you have out in front. And then you are going to do the opposite of what you see here. So if you have negative two, you're gonna plug it in here and you're gonna go negative, negative two, and you're gonna be adding two to the X values. So that's what each piece does. Um, domain and range will undergo the same transformations in, uh, each, uh, uh, in each case. So you'll just have to think. Um, uh, also, the xy point becomes uh, x 1 over y on the graph of 1 over f of x. So that is the reciprocal graph. Uh, one last piece of review is that if you have an xy point and it's becoming yx after a reflection on the line y equal x, that is called f of negative 1 of x or the inverse. All right, so there it is for reviews. Now we are just going to do some questions. So uh, we're gonna transform a couple points here. So we got the original points on f of x and we have the following transformations happening. So the first thing you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna want to go ahead and pull the two out from the x because it's not positive one. So you pull the two out and that's gonna give you x minus three like that, subtract one. So now we know that in each of these cases we're gonna be taking our x, y point like this, and the transformations that are happening is we're gonna be going two times y, subtract one. So leave ourselves some room for x, so we're gonna be going two times y, subtract one, and on the x value, we're gonna be doing the reciprocal of that, so we're gonna be going one half x, and then always the opposite sign that's here, so plus three. So that's what's gonna be happening in each case. So we can take our first point here, and uh, one half times zero is zero, plus three is still just three. And then when we go negative two times two, we get negative four. Subtract one, we get negative five. Right here, uh, what's gonna happen here? So we're gonna go negative four times a half, which is negative two, plus three, uh, which is one. And then on the y value, we got five times two, 10. Subtract one is nine. And for our last one here, we got, um, let's see, 10 times a half is five, plus three is eight. So there we go. And then zero times two is still zero, subtract one is negative one. There we have it. Next question. All right, so I started grabbing exam questions to review on. So this is a tricky one from June 2019. Um, we're taking the absolute value of x and we're gonna be writing g of x. So that'll be the first thing to write. And g of x is uh, these transformations happening on the absolute value of x. So we got a reflection in the x-axis. So that'll be simply multiplying the absolute value by a negative sign. So we got a negative sign out there and I'm gonna write an x in here. So that'll take care of the reflection in the x-axis. Um, a vertical translation of five units down, well, that's happening to the y value, so that'll be outside the absolute value, we'll be subtracting five. Now, the tricky one here is the horizontal stretch by a factor of three. So we need to remember that if we're stretching by a factor of three in the equation, it would have been a one-third, because it's always the reciprocal. Oh, there you have it. Now we got two multiple choice questions. Um, this one is from June 2019. So it's giving me uh, the domain and range of f of x. And it's asking me to identify the domain of the inverse function. So the inverse function, the domain and range switch. So what used to be the range is now the domain. So that's going to be right here. So the answer will be D. And for this one, this is from January 2019, they're giving us the point 0.51, and they wanna know the coordinates um, of the corresponding point after reflection in the line y equal x. Well, reflecting in the line y equal x simply takes that xy point, and it's going to do the inverse, so it's gonna make it yx. So to get my answer, I simply have to switch the x value and the y value, so the answer is gonna be 1.5. Okay, now on this one, uh, they're giving me the range of f of x, which is from uh, negative six to uh, 12. And they're saying the range is transformed um, 
given uh, the function y equal a f of x, and it becomes negative 2 to 4, identify the value of a. So somehow, if I look at my first value here of negative 6, somehow I took the negative 6, and it became a negative 2 after being multiplied by a. So I can solve this little equation here, divide both sides by negative 6, and you're going to get uh, negative 2 over 6, which is 2 over 6. Um, which is a third, so just double check and make sure that if you take the 12 and multiply it by a third, you do get four, so that seems to be the answer. Uh, C, right on. Uh, question nine from January 2019, now we are getting trickier. So it says determine the equation of g of x in terms of f of x. So we are taking, um, do, 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 do. we are taking, uh, the equation of g of x in terms of f of x. So we're taking f of x and we are turning it into g of x. So what happens to f of x here to get g of x? Well, let's see, we can write g of x equals, well, we can see there's probably been some sort of flip over the x-axis. So we've taken f of x and we've multiplied it by a negative one. So we got negative f. Um, and if I track this point right here, which is at one, two, three, four, five, so it's at five, it's gonna go down over here to negative five. And I need to get it over here. So I'm gonna be shifting horizontally one, two, three units to the right. So we know that we always need the opposite sign. So if I'm shifting to the right, I'm going to write x minus three, and that should do it. We'll check a couple more points. So this one here would go down to negative three and then shift over here, so there it is. This one would also go down to negative three and then shift over three units. So yeah, this is definitely the graph. We got it. Good job, because that was a tricky one. Um, 27, another multiple choice from January 2019. So they're giving us the original graph of f of x and it's x minus one squared. It's translated two units to the left and three units up and identify the equation of the transform graph g of x. Well, they all have a plus three, so that takes care of doing that. <laughs> it's all the answers have it. Uh, but if we're translating two units to the left, we need to remember that to the left would be negative. Um, we're always gonna be doing the opposite thing in the equation when it comes to the x value. So I'm actually going to be adding two to that number. So it's gonna be negative one pl plus two, which is plus one, giving us the answer a so there we go another tricky one um ooh, and just to wrap it all up question 37 from january 2019 it's a three marker um and it has a square root and a couple transformations in it so i'm just going to uh caution you, please remember uh, those points on the square root of x. So if you remember some of those xy points, um, what we can do is we can take those xy points on this graph and see what the transformations are on this graph. So we have a four in front of the x, which means we're gonna be multiplying by the reciprocal. So we're gonna be going one quarter times our x values, and then we have a negative one on the outside, which is affecting our y values. So we'll be going y minus one. Now, doing this, um, the points on the square root of x that I should remember are are zero, zero, and then the point one, one, and then the point four, two. You can easily regenerate those points by plugging in some x values. So let's do these transformations and see if we can get a nice little sketch. So zero times a quarter is still just zero, uh, but when we go uh, zero minus one, we're gonna get negative one there. Um, this point here, so one times a quarter is a quarter, and then one subtract one is zero, so there's our y value. And uh, four times a quarter is one, and then two subtract one is one. So now I have three points, I'm gonna try to graph it, so so zero, negative one, and then we got like a quarter zero, so we'll label that point, but we'll just stick it there, and we'll draw a little arrow, and we'll just write that's the point one quarter zero, and then we got the point one one. Now we know it's a radical function, and we can see that it's opening up this way. So now we can just do our sketch and maybe do a little bit better of a job than me, actually go through the point. But there it is, that would actually be enough to get the full three marks. And I looked at the answer key and they don't actually even expect you to label the X uh, intercept in this case, although we did. All right, thanks for joining me for uh, my 10 minute math review. I hope you enjoyed it, bye bye.